So due to popular request, today we're going to take a look at the Noodler's Ahab. This is in ivory and I have already filled it with Platinum Carbon Black ink, which is a water resistant ink that is also somewhat alcohol marker proof. It is a pigment based ink. The Noodler's Ahab is much larger than the Noodler's Flex. I would say this is a size six nib. And I know that some people have done nib conversions with a dip pin G nib um, with the Ahab and with the Conrad. I recently picked my Ahab up from Paper and Ink Arts. It is a calligraphy and inking supply store here in Nashville, Tennessee. Here are a couple of sketches I've already done with the Ahab, just little doodles from life. And one thing I immediately noticed is that due to the size of the nib, even though there is a fairly large ebonite feed, and the feed, for those of you who are not familiar with fountain pens, the feed is what makes sure the ink gets to the end of the pen. Uh, if you're writing or if you're sketching sort of slowly, I'm gonna need to start this one this morning. If you're writing or you're sketching sort of slowly, um, that's fine. So this should be okay for inking. But for quick sketching, the ink flow can't keep up with the speed of my hand. So there's a lot of stops and starts. So I thought those of you who are interested in this pen for field sketching, um, it's a nice large size. It feels good in the hand. It's made of vegetable resin. Um, it does have a bit of a smell to it that doesn't really bother me. My Flex had more of it. My Noodler's Flex had more of a smell. Um, this is a fairly light smell comparatively. Um, however, it may not be ideal for field sketching because the ink flow may not be able to keep up with your doodling. So you may prefer to use a flex, which I haven't had the same issues with. So today I'm going to do an inking demonstration. I did a very basic demonstration of this pen when I was doing the haul and overview from the goodies for the goodies that I picked up from Paper and Ink Arts on Saturday, since it was their grand reopening. I've already prepared this really cute little illustration of a girl splashing in a puddle, and I'm going to attempt to ink that with the Ahab today. So that is what I'm gonna do for you guys. I hope you'll stick around and I hope you'll enjoy it. So usually when I'm inking, I ink from the top down and usually from left to right because I am right-handed. I'm going to go ahead and remove this little illustration from this Canson XL mixed media book because for some reason, the spirals on these things, when they're on the side like this, they just always get in the way. They greatly affect my ability to ink. I don't really need them anyway. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper. Really, I'm just going to use the same book and I'm gonna zoom way in for you guys. So first, we're just going to demonstrate this pen a little bit. Now, I'm not a calligrapher. I am not into hand lettering. My handwriting is pretty terrible. I'm not into fountain pens for writing. I'm into fountain pens for drawing. And my friend Heidi Black actually introduced me to fountain pen pens. She is an employee at JetPens currently, but we met while we were both attending SCAD. And um, I enjoy dip pens, but I don't enjoy the mess they make. And I enjoy brushes but if my hands are shaking or if I'm having a bad day or a stressful day, it's going to greatly affect my inking. So I'm always interested in portable options for inking, which, you know, has made me a food pen fanatic. And, you know, fountain pens are sort of like the dip pin equivalent of a brush pen. Kind of, sort of, right? I mean, the dip pin, yeah, 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 yeah. Dip whatever that analogy, I lost myself. So um, when I'm coming to fountain pens, when I'm talking to you guys about fountain pens, I am not coming with any calligraphy background. I don't care about that. I'm not coming to you guys with a hand lettering background. I don't care about that. I'm not coming with to you guys from a pin collecting background. I don't care about that. I'm coming to you guys as a comic artist and someone who has reviewed art supplies for the past seven years. I use different supplies every single day of my life. Not a day goes by where I don't draw something. And you can find that out by checking out my Instagram. Um, there's proof of that there. And uh, I'm not what I would call a natural artist. Everything has been really hard won for me. So I really care about materials and performance. And I do happily take recommendations. So the Noodler's 
uh, Ahab was not actually recommended to me by my friends who do use fountain pens for drawing. They didn't have any opinion on it at all because they hadn't tried it. Um, the Flex that I own was not recommended to me by those friends. Um, but I wanted a pen that had a flexible nib, not too flexible, but some give. That's why I went and I modified a Jinhao X750 to have a G nib. Um, but something that was portable, could go with me, could do field sketches. Um, I could work at conventions. I could work at shows. I could work on the road because I travel a lot. And the Ahab has a fair bit of flex for a steel nibbed fountain pen. It has what would what is called a creeper nib. That means the, the slit in the tines goes pretty far up so the ink can creep out. I haven't actually completely broken this one in but there is a fair amount of flex and I am getting some railroading. Let me check and see if my piston needs refilling. So that will be, <clears throat> no, I'm good. If so, that will be a messy delay. I am getting a lot of railroading, which I want to get out of its system. So I will do some quick sketching and I'll demonstrate how it has a tendency to spider out. And sometimes that just means the pin needs to get seeds already uh, breaking up the line, even though my pin is very much making contact with the paper because I am moving. Oh. Let's try something else. So I just dip my pen in a little clean water. Sometimes um, with these pigmented inks like the Platinum uh, Carbon Black, it'll clog up your nib a little bit. So just a little bit of clean water. Yeah, can really help make a difference. Now it seems to be working much better. That was a quick sketch demonstration. It leaves a deposit of ink the same way a nib would, a dip pen nib would. So it will take longer to dry. So there may be frequent stops and starts in this video. And this is not any special uh, fountain pen paper. I'm actually not a fan of specialty fountain pen papers. I really hate the texture on them. Um, so I'm always trying to find other types of paper that I can use with my pens. And this is just cheap Canson XL mixed media paper. So it's really not anything special. This pen seems better suited for handling thick lines than the Flex, which makes sense. It is a bigger nib. Moving slowly and deliberately, this is a very easy inker. And there's a good amount of ink flow. Um, so fills do not seem to pose a problem. With some of my other fountain pens, when I attempt to do fills like this, it tears up the paper surface. I'm not really getting that. And that tends to happen because you've got wet paper from the ink wetting the paper and you're using a sharp metal object to scrape against it. So yeah, you can imagine what would happen. But this pen has a tip and uh, it seems to mitigate a lot of that kind of scratching. Now I did clean this pen out before using and those of you who watched my paper and ink arts haul video know that I actually had trouble getting it to start. It was leaking the ink like as soon as I filled it but it wouldn't leak water. So um, I actually cleaned it out all over again. And I was prepared to, oh no, and I reseated the nib because I thought maybe there was like um, air getting in there. Maybe it had didn't have a good seat against the feed and that seemed to fix the problem. And when I clean my pens, I use a dilution of dish soap in water and then I rinse it out multiple times. And I've been really fortunate. I have not had any that just any pens that just absolutely refuse to work. 
I thought this was going to be my first. And I was really disappointed at the time because I was like, well, I really like my, my flex. All right, there's my first railroading. Go over it again. Of course, it's never as nice the second time you go over it, but that's okay. My ink level was good when I started, but this thing may drink ink. And normally when inking, I wouldn't actually do a fill with a dip pen or a technical pen or anything sort of comparable in terms of like, you know, the fine line sort of things. Um, I would wait until the end and use a Pentel pocket brush or a larger brush pen or um, a brush, an actual brush to do the fills. But we're kind of, kind of putting this through its paces. So I'm going to do a few unusual things today, probably. And when I do these inking videos, I like to keep my, um, my tone of voice and my mannerisms really like low key um, because it I do better inking if I'm very chill and relaxed and my inking is terrible if I'm stressed out or hyper. I had a little bit of trouble controlling that line. It's not surprising. You know what? Just back in the handle. So really, this isn't a bad anchor. There's some line variation. You don't have to bear down too, too hard to get a good line weight if you want a heavier line weight. Um, it's not super fine. I would compare it to inking with a five to an eight um, fine liner. Whereas I would say the flex is like inking with a three to a five, maybe. You can get the, the, the flex as almost as large as you can with the Ahab. Ahab's a little bit easier on my hands though. It's a big pen, but it's not a too big pen. I appreciate that. Okay, are you out? I just went off screen and tapped on my scrap piece of paper. And I got the ink flowing again, not a big deal. Okay, so the biggest problem I'm currently running into is I am, so I am inking on a hard surface without a buffer. I'm inking on top of an Ink Essentials craft sheet and underneath that is glass and I'm using a fairly stiff nib. So sometimes it'll sort of catch and uh, take my pen along for the ride, which is not uncommon with um, stiffer dip pen nibs, that sort of thing. Um, it, it is not a problem with a brush because you know, a brush is super flexible and you're really trying to be very light handed. Whereas I am putting a fair amount of pressure on, oh, I railroaded. I am putting a fair amount of pressure on my Ahab in order to get larger lines. So it's really easy for any sort of inconsistencies in the paper or the uh, Ink Central's craft sheet or my tabletop to sort of carry the pen with it. Um, and this would be true if I were really bearing down with um, a tech pen or um, a highliner as well. So it's not really an issue of the fountain pen so much as it is an issue of, you know, the desk and uh, my inking conditions that I set up, that I control. And I'm not under any obligation to do this review. Um, I uh, purchased this product out of my own pocket for my own personal use from a local store that while I'm on moderately friendly terms with in terms of um, as a 
art supply reviewer um, and I'm on, you know, good enough terms as a customer, I would suppose, um, you know, we don't have any sort of a formal agreement. There wasn't like, hey, will you review this? None of that. Um, however, people did ask in the comments if I would do a drawing with it and talk about it. And I'm just happy to oblige. And there has been no cutting through the paper. So that's good. It probably would have been easier if I'd inked on that um, stupid Denik notebook that came in my Art Snacks Inktober because it has very smooth uh, coated paper. But this is working out just fine actually. I'm not getting any feathering. I'm not getting any issues. And I often do my comic work on um, watercolor paper and other sort of textured papers. But really I'm not having any any problems. Maybe I got a good Ahab. Not that there's anything really wrong with Ahab, but I know some people tried to warn me away. And that's not... Yes, I appreciate the warning. Thank you so much for looking out for me. But I am super stubborn and I, when you warn me, it makes me want to do it twice as much. Because I want to, I want to see why. <laughs> um, so I'm not like disputing the validity of the issues that you had. Um, I'm just saying like I'm not having any of those issues. I don't know if it's a batch thing or if Paper and Guards test theirs. I don't think they do because mine was wrapped when I bought it. Um, they didn't even want to, the, the girl at the counter was like super not into the idea of showing me the nib because I asked to see it and, uh, but she did and I, I bought it because part, I mean, I was going to buy it anyway, which is why she showed me the nib because I was like, I'm, I'm going to buy this anyway. I just want to make sure. And I wanted to make sure that it had the creeper nib, the flex nib. Um, and uh, I have a pretty good memory, but I usually have a lot of information floating around at any given time. So, you know, when it comes to art supplies, sometimes it's important for me to double check because sometimes I will get two products confused, two very similar products confused. I was hoping they'd have the Conrad because then I would have gotten a Conrad and an Ahab, except they're not all that different, but I am glad they had the Con, I mean the Ahab. This is also a really easy writer, or for me, it's a really easy writer. Um, like I said, my handwriting is atrocious, so I am not coming to you guys as like a hand letter, which is, that's really more like drawing anyway, but I'm bad at that as well. Uh, well, <laughs> not bad at drawing necessarily, bad at like drawing letter forms without sketching them in pencil first. I'm bad at committing. Um, gosh, words, but I have written notes with this thing and it's very easy. The ink flow is very immediate. And if you're having trouble with your writing, the nib and the feed, which is the silver thing, duh, and the feed is the black. Um, it's made of like a, a vulcanized rubber. It's called ebonite. These are friction fit, which means there's not a catch. There's no glue. You just pull with sufficient force and it'll come out. You're not breaking the pen. You can reseat your, your nib to something that suits your, your needs a little bit better. So other than maybe bumping up the line art just a little bit in a couple of places, I'm pretty much finished. All right. So, what do I think of the Noodlers Ahab? Well, I paid $23 for this at Paper and Ink Arts. They only had two colors. They had the jade and the ivory. They used to color, they used to carry a wider variety of the colors, but at their store, there isn't a lot of demand for this. Um, and I think that might be because they kind of cater more to calligraphers and letterers than they do to comic artists, but we're working on remedying that. And I have a feeling that as more comic artists frequent their, their shop, um, they may find that there's more of a demand for these sort of products. Um, you can also get 
an Ahab from Goulet Pins and from Amazon. Amazon has a really wide range of colors, but I wanted my pin now, 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 and I wanted to support a local business that's really cool. So 23 was fine with me. And I was oh, not really that picky about the color because if I can't get it in a demonstrator so I can see the ink, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the body is pretty as it is, you know, so I'm happy. Um, the flex, there is a fair bit of flex. There is some, there are some railroading issues. Even when I was moving slow, that could be a problem with the pigmented ink that I'm using. I have not yet tried this pen with other inks. Now I usually stick to the carbon black ink because it's a rich black ink. Um, it takes a fair bit of scrubbing with a watercolor brush to get the particles to move. In fact, I can show you guys because I did a few tests. These are water solubility tests. So this is the platinum carbon ink where I did a water brush over it immediately. And of course it moved. And this is after it dried for 24 hours. So it, there is a lot of ghosting. It's a little bit hard to see, fair bit of ghosting. More than I would necessarily be comfortable with, but I was really scrubbing with the water brush and I was using one of those nylon bristle water brushes. This is the Noodler's Bulletproof black. Um, this is immediate and this is after it has dried for a while. Bulletproof black is water permanent, but the way it becomes um, waterproof, I'm sorry, is um, it bonds with the paper surface. And this is a watercolor paper. And I know that the Noodler's Bulletproof does not bond well to, co to papers that have a high cotton rag. This is actually a really cheap watercolor paper. It's cellulose-based watercolor paper. Um, so I think there's something else going on, but as you can see, the Platinum has far fewer problems than the Noodlers. And when I use pens, I want them to either be alcohol marker proof or waterproof because those are the two main media I use the most. And I don't like inking after the fact. Um, my Ahab, it was very comfortable to hold. I didn't suffer from hand fatigue. If I were inking a piece, even a little piece like this with my flex, my hand would start to cramp up. I do have arthritis in my right hand. Um, I do bear down too hard and I use mechanical pencils instead of wooden pencils. So I've done this to myself. But if you are a fool like me who draws like 18 hours or so a day, you really want um, maybe a larger body pen. It's made from veg vegetable resin. It does have a bit of a smell, but I didn't find it overwhelming. But uh, Teo at Parka Blogs did find it overwhelming. So I think it may vary from uh, pen to pen and from person to person. And I'm usually sensitive to strong smells. So maybe I got lucky <laughs> with this one. Um, so I found that the nib delivers a line weight between a five millimeter uh, fine liner and an eight millimeter fine liner, which is great because I do tend to like heavier bouncy line works. And uh, honestly, between this and the Noodler's Flex, it's got me covered for pretty much a range of sizes that I would need from for lines. And if I needed something truly huge, then I really should be using a brush anyway. Um, I enjoyed inking with it. Um, part of that is the novelty part of it as I just really kind of got into inking with my fountain pen as I went along and I do like sketching with it. This wouldn't be the pen I would necessarily grab for sketching as I've noticed that when I try to put down quick lines, the ink flow just can't keep up. I, maybe I should use a more liquid ink, a less dry ink, or maybe I should just use it, the Noodler's Flex because I don't have that problem with the Noodler's Flex. I think both pins are great. Um, I can see myself using this for a long time, both as an inking tool and as a writing tool because it's very comfortable in my hand. And $23 was really a very, very fair price to pay. I'm really happy with my purchase. Now, would I recommend you get this pen? It really depends on what you're into. If you like the things that I had to say about it, then yeah, $23 is a small investment. I think you'll enjoy it, especially if you're just getting into fountain pens. It seems like for the most part, there's a few exceptions, but the fountain pens that really work well for artists, for illustrators, for people who do line art, tend to be the less expensive pins. The Noodler's pins are great. Um, I do have a Charlie and I did a video comparing my Flex and my Charlie. The Charlie is this little free pen that comes if you get the bigger bottles of Noodler's ink and it tends to match the bottle you get. And it's the sort of thing where if you listen to interviews with Nathan Tardif, the guy behind um, Noodler's, he talks about um, 
including that a little inexpensive fountain pen to get someone else interested in fountain pens. So it's really meant for you to give it to somebody else, for you to fill it with ink and for you to give it to someone else, which I think is great. I love that. Um, I, I, I am an art supply pusher, so I love other art supply pushers. And when I heard that, I was just like, oh. And then I ordered um, a big bottle of Noodler's Proof Black so I could get a Charlie of my own. But with the exception of the Charlie, and I haven't tried the Nippon set or the uh, Conrad yet, I've been really pleased with the Noodler's pens. They are great inexpensive pens, good for doodling. Um, you know, they're not so expensive that if you lost it, it'd ruin my day if I lost it because I like the pen, but it's not about the money, it's about the pen. Um, so yeah, I have been lucky and I haven't had the problems that some other fountain pen users are having. I am really careful about cleaning my pens. I try to use them every other day to every day if I can. And yeah, I do use pigment ink in it, which can cause problems. So um, that is something that you should be aware of. But yeah, I like it. I recommend it if you are like me, if your stuff is similar to mine, and if you love traditional media, then it is definitely well worth checking out. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you will stick around because as I acquire more fountain pens, of course, I will be talking about them. Although I promise this channel is not gonna become a fountain pen channel. This is still an art channel. But I think they're great art tools. And I think if you like dip pens and you like to ink with dip pens, they they are a really great way to have your cake and eat it too, to have your dip pen and be able to travel. So thank you guys. I will see you later. I'm Becca Hilburn from Natto Soup Studios. Bye.